Okay, let's turn this down a bit. Like that. Okay. So guys, talking about the image quality of this adapter. It's quite difficult because normally you can judge an image quality by uh, the lens itself, but this time it's an adapter which you will put in front of a lens. So um, looking at build or image quality, it kind of depends on the taking lens. So what I can do is talk about the characteristics of this adapter. And by adding this adapter on your taking lens, you will definitely add quite some flaring action. It kind of depends on the taking lens also, but what I saw is that when I didn't use the adapter, I saw less uh, flaring action than with this one. And I'm talking about two types of flaring. Of course, we got the nice flaring, the streak-like flaring we all love, the, the nice lines. Uh, those are great on this adapter. And you got two options. You got the blue uh, flare and you got the amber. I got the amber because I have already several anamorphic lenses with the blue one. So it was nice to add this amber flare to the, uh, the arsenal. But uh, what I can say is that when looking at that other type of flare, the total haze flare over your image, um, that's, yeah. It's there, definitely. So you lose quite some contrast and details in your shot. Um, when the sun is from the side, not even in uh, the picture. So that uh, could be a problem. And I saw it with some shots that I made with several lenses that there was quite that haze flaring. And then the bokeh. The bokeh is really nice, but also depends on the taking lens. So if you have a nice lens, a good lens with lots of bokeh um, aperture blades with a nice round bokeh, soft bokeh, then the, uh, the bokeh with this adapter will be very pleasing. Uh, let's see, I got this list. So, and then the distortion. So the distortion from this adapter is the barrel distortion, which is the most pleasing one. I think that personally, um, instead of the pin cushion so like Siri made the, 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 the Venus and also now the new Saturn and also Laowa has those nice nanomorphs they those are great but I really don't like really dislike uh, the pin cushion distortion so and people are saying yeah that's not a problem you can fix it in post but I don't like to fix stuff in post uh, not something like that so I'm glad to see that this has the barrel distortion the most pleasing and more natural looking distortion so uh, the next thing is the uh, details the sharpness uh, I have to say that I couldn't really see any problems with sharpness um, because again it's about the taking lens. So if you use the taking lens, for instance, I shot this with an f1.2, 35 mil. And of course that lens itself is soft, wide open. Um, and I shot it here with the anamorphic adapter on it. And you can see, of course, 1.2, it's soft. It's still nice sharp, nice enough sharp. I mean, because from a distance, I don't like crisp sharp clinic shots so this is good enough for me but stopping it down to let's say 1.4 you will get uh, more details uh, and again with also the, uh, the f2 and at f2.8 it's really sharp uh, what you can see is the sharpness is is like expanding from the center uh, towards the edges so i think in this case it of course depends also what are you framing so if there are like two persons in the shot i think it's better to stop it down a bit, get more a uh, wider area uh, of focus in your shot. The next one, color rendition, very important. And yes, too bad this lens does have quite the color shift. What I saw in the tests I did uh, was that the overall image was way warmer with this adapter on it. So I had to make several adjustments in post when using like a multicam setup. I saw with several lenses, it looked way warmer. So matching it was quite difficult in, uh, for me. I'm not like a grading expert, but was difficult to do. So um, I have to keep that in mind when shooting with this one. And also I got the B cam over here. So I will do my best to match it with the A cam over there we will see but yes there's quite the color shift the next one and that's also very nice to see is the light sensitivity so i had this um anamorphic data from shirui 
and that Siri adapter only goes to a T2.9. And that was a pity because T2.9 on the microverturs is and not enough to get the nice shallow depth of field that still cinematic look. And with this one, you don't have that uh, limitation. So the light sensitivity is the same. Um, so I shot with a 35mm f1.2 and I also read uh, on my display on the camera that it has a plus three on the metering. So the exposure was a plus three, adding this adapter and it was the same. And I also saw it in post. It's good to see that both bokeh is the same and uh, both the light sensitivity is the same. Uh, which I didn't expect with such a tiny uh, adapter compared to the bigger one, way bigger one from CoE. Yeah, and then we have to talk about the uh, usability of this adapter. What I can say is that the usability of this adapter is quite good because it has such a compact design. And that compact design makes it possible to use it, uh, let's say for in car shots. Um, it's, it's that nice because you can get like a 1.5 times anamorphic in a setup with taken lens and an anamorphic adapter in still a nice compact size package. So you can really take it with you. I had other lenses and adapters which were so big that I didn't even, even brought them with me because they were simply too big, a hustle to work with or too big, too big for in my bag. So that's really convenient if I'm talking about and looking at the usability of this adapter. Maybe even it's too small because the back thread of this adapter is 52 mil and 52 mil is quite small. You have to have a taken lens with a front diameter of 52 mil. So in my case, I, I had to buy specific lenses, small lenses to use with this adapter. Also to keep it a nice tidy package to use, but also because of the filter thread, because if you have a lens that has a bigger filter thread, the, then chances are high that you can see the anamorphic adapter or get a strong vignetting, especially with the wider angles. So um, something maybe to keep in mind with this adapter. And another thing that's nice is the single focus system. Because back in the days with anamorphic adapters, you had like double focus, the focus ring on the lens and the focus ring uh, on the adapter. Now you only have to use the focus ring on the adapter. And what you have to do with the taken lens is that you have to, to set the taken lens on infinity and just leave it at infinity. I also taped it off so it's an infinity and the only thing you have to do is to focus with the adapter ring. And uh, such a tiny package screams held, handheld shooting. And that's also possible because the focus rotation of this lens is quite short, 180 degrees. Another thing to keep in mind with this, uh, if you're using especially wide angles, this lens uh, adapter does have quite some... Are the lights dim? I'm sorry. Maybe by moving a bit. It seems that, oh, okay, it's back on. Oh, that's nice. Um, but what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, one thing to keep in mind is the focus breathing. It, the focus breathing in this uh, adapter is quite strong. And especially when using wider angles, it get enhanced that, aspect, uh, that, that effect. But if you're using a plan on using this adapter with a wider angle, just keep in mind the focus breathing quite strong. Um, and especially when doing focus racking, yeah. Just, just take it easy, just take it easy. Yeah, and that's what I can say about usability. It's great, this adapter. I love using it. It's small, I'm taking it with me and also with this kind of shoots, also in the car, just like having a normal lens, but then a taken lens with an adapter on it. Awesome. And in fact, I have to say that I planned on shooting this one with my light. I had a nice RGB LED tube. I brought it with me without the battery. So I hope this was lit enough. And I also hope the focus was good because I had to do it manually.
Okay, so I'm grabbing some lenses because I want to talk about, of course, the pros and cons of this anamorphic adapter, and this will help me explain it. So um, let's start first with the pros. So looking at the pros, the obvious, of course, the first one, the compactness. It's really compact. It's a tiny anamorphic adapter, which makes it possible to work with such a tiny setup, even though you're working with an anamorphic adapter. So that is really nice. It's really small because I got the anamorphic adapter from CWE, the 1.25. And as you can see, it's really tiny compared to the CWE adapter. So that's definitely, definitely pro number one. Pro number two is the fact that it has such a legit anamorphic character, 1.5. Even though it's this tiny, it has a 1.5 people. That's great because this big one has a 1.25. A 1.25 is nice when you're combining it with your anamorphic lenses. For instance, the Mars, I can make it like a 1.6 or with the Venus, I can work with it and make it like a two times anamorphic. So then it works. But using this with, let's say, an, a cine lens, making it anamorphic, it's not really working. Um, the effect is not strong enough to make it anamorphic. So this one is legit, 1.5. Brings me to the next one, and that's the fact that this one has pleasing flares. Of course, they all got their flaring, and it's kind of a personal preference, of course, but what I, for instance, I got the lenses here, I'm working also with c and I like those lenses, I really like them. But with the flaring, sometimes it's too much. For instance, the full frame, so the Venus and the Saturn, those streak lines are sometimes more, it's, it's kind of a, aggressive in a way. So uh, they can ruin the shot. Sometimes they are too strong. And that's also a bit with the 1.33, the APS-C lenses. Luckily, they made it more pleasing and less strong with the whole Mars setup. That's why I love using these. Um, and with the anamorphic adapter, like I said, it's not strong enough. So there are almost no flares. So that's not a problem. This one does have the flares, but they are nice. And you got an option. You got the flares for the, you got the, the amber and you got the blue one. I got the amber because I already got blue one, like I said before, but it's nice to have such an option. And also that it's pleasing. It's more natural looking. It's, I think it's more blending in your shot. So that's pro number three. Pro number four is uh, the lens support. I like the fact that it has a lens support. So you can like, Rig it in a way with rods. You can slide it in and out easily when uh, changing lenses. I like to work this way because then for me, it works the fastest way. Um, I don't get troubles with outlining, just putting it in, slide it in, slide it off, and you're ready to go. So that's nice. A bit of a downer is the fact that the support is quite high. The, the, the stand is quite high. I would have preferred this from the CDW Mars set. It's just a screw, so you can really use lens support uh, options from the market on this one. Because in my setup, in my current setup, I couldn't use the standard uh, lens support options. Um, so I had to make something, yeah, less pleasing, but hey, it works. It's like a custom setup I had to make in order to make it in a way that I can mount it on my rig because the normal lens supports which are available in the market are already too high itself. So this is for me the only option. So I would have preferred to see this one, but still it has a lens support, so that is really great. And what's also great is the fact that it has a short focus rotation. So it's 180 degrees. And that's nice because normally I'm working with follow focus system, but I can also use it without follow focus system and work with it by hand because I can reach the whole range of the focus by hand. So that's nice. And then, um, yeah, the cons, of course, they are there. Um, let's start with the first one. And that fact is that it's quite, quite expensive. This tiny thing is quite expensive. Um, I think it's expensive because it's just an adapter. It's not a lens. Uh, let, let's just do comparison. When you want to buy this adapter, you can also buy an A7 II, uh, Sony A7 II kit. You can even buy the ZV-10 from Sony, the Canon RP. You can buy the Fujifilm X-T30. You can even buy the Lumix S1, even the Lumix GH6. 
that's the price range of this adapter. So it's really expensive and therefore kind of niche, I think. But in general, anamorphic adapters are really expensive. So that's something you can expect from this because it's an anamorphic adapter, but still really, really expensive. Uh, the next con is the fact that because you're working with an adapter, you have to do the outlining, the setup. It's sometimes a hustle. So normally you're picking up an anamorphic adapter, screwed on and ready to go. This one isn't the case. So you have your taking lens, taking lens, you have to set the taking lens, what they say uh, to on infinity, but that's not the case um, because every lens is just sharp. We combined with the adapter on a certain distance, um, not infinity. So each sometimes something before it. And I also tape all my lenses. So I know, okay, that's the, <laughs> the good spot. I got it screwed on, on an, uh, a rod. Uh, on my rig so I can slide it in and out. But when you're using it directly on the lens, you also have to work with the the, 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 the step up and step down rings. Um, you have to perfectly align it. Working with the anamorphic adapters just takes some time. And also when changing lenses, then keep that in mind. Just need more time to prep it. Another con, you can only use it with primes. Yes, you can use zoom, but this one comes goes in and out. Uh, not possible when using it on rods. You can use it when you're slided on, but then still you have to keep in mind that focal uh, length, the field of view, when you're putting it too wide, you can even see the adapter uh, in the frame. Keep that in mind. And also you have to keep in mind when attaching it on lenses, that's when uh, focusing or zooming your front uh, element doesn't rotate. Otherwise this won't work. So. The next con is the fact that um, yeah, the image quality, of course, depends on the taken lens. Yes, this adapter is really good, but still, if you're using a poor lens behind it, the footage won't be uh, good. So yeah, kind of a con, but keep that in mind. Um, and also uh, that when you're using such an adapter, you're also making your setup longer. So yes, this is quite tiny, but let's do a comparison. When I'm looking at this, I'm using a very small lens, for instance, to keep it tidy. But let's just say I'm using the c 2 e Mars on it. Side by side, you can see that the size of the taken lens is very important. This uh, taken lens, 35 mil, is very small. And even adding this adapter makes it smaller, still shorter than the Mars uh, from c 2 e So that is in this situation the case but when you're using for instance a cine lens like this this is the mikey 16 mil it's very tiny still so this is normal this is even more normal if you're looking at size of lenses i'm adding the adapter on the c 2 and as you can see the setup is quite long also the um got the kind of a front heavy setup now so that's the downside of using an anamorphic adapter so yeah, that sums it up guys. The review, finally after months, Blazer Nero anamorphic adapter. Yes, it's great. Even though it has those cons, guys, for me personally, anamorphic shooter, I love it. I love using it, but not ditching my anamorphic lens, of course. Still love those, still love using those. And I like combining stuff. I like play to play with lenses, the anamorphic de squeeze factors. Nice to have this, a nice addition in an arsenal. So I'm glad to have it. Guys, um, if you have any questions about this um, anamorphic adapter or maybe something else I mentioned in this uh, video, uh, leave a comment. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.